Hey, I'm Joe Roberts. Hi, crazy kids. You know me, I'm gonna not talk about myself. I'm here with Marty Old, who I just today dubbed. Uh, I'm into dubbing titles now, so. Really? I just gave her the title of First Lady of Wine of Philadelphia. Oh, so. I'm honored. Congratulations. I, I feel teary now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That's that's Is that fabulous. that red beer we had? Oh, maybe. Maybe. That we had some very great. We're here in Asteria in downtown Philly. It's awesome. The food is amazing. Uh, we had some great wine. We had some great beer. Uh, I'll get into the wine stuff later, but uh, we're here with Marnie Old, who is a co-author of a book called He Said Beer, She Said Wine. Did I get that sequence right? You did. You didn't convince, you should have convinced me that she said wine, he said beer. You know, but I wanted the last word. This is somebody's experience, okay? I'm clearly out of my element. Um, and Marnie's got a new book called Wine Secrets, so I thought we'd talk a little bit about that. There's actually a really cool aspect of the book. Uh, I'll let her speak about it, but she's interviewed um, a lot of wine personalities. And one of them came up with a really interesting way of preserving wine, so I thought we could talk about that. Well, well, the book itself grew out of the idea of talking to top people in the business and having them share not wine knowledge or lore in that kind of imposing sense, but really just wine advice for people who are wine drinkers but don't necessarily want to make it their career or spend a lot of their time doing wine homework. Right? What? So it's, it's I don't understand why would you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's me interviewing a lot of top winemakers, sommeliers, wine authors, educators, chefs, restaurateurs about really simple ideas in the world of wine that can help you do a better job wine shopping, serving wine with food, serving wine at home, uh, feel more comfortable ordering wine in restaurants and so on. And the chapter you're talking about is actually an interview I did with Ron Weigand, who is one of the only people in the world who has both top credentials in the industry, Master of Wine and Master Sommelier. This is, and, this is and kind of unprecedented. Him, and passed them both on his first try, I understand. Correct. And the guy is That's just, nice. he's, he's just a wine genius. He's the publisher of Restaurant Wine Magazine. And um, when I called him up to ask him to participate in this book, I had a particular article of his in mind that he had written back in 1987 for the San Francisco Chronicle. And it was a piece that somebody had forwarded me like a decade later, but that just blew my mind as a sommelier in fine dining restaurants. I could not believe what he was writing about. And, and what he said was just that, once a bottle of wine is open, we tend to think that it's on the downslope. You know, that, that no matter what you do, it's it's on its way to being worthless. And it's you need to drink car. it now. It's a used car, you're driving it off the lot. Exactly. Yeah, it's like exactly. Enjoy it while you can. Um, but what he pointed out was that there are ways to preserve open wine that are more cost effective and efficient than what's being presented in the marketplace. If you read about wine present preservation, they'll tell you, oh, well, you need a vacuum pump system, or you need these inert gas sprays that lay a blanket over the wine in the bottle, and, and all of these methods are, are useful at slowing the degradation of wine, but nothing stops it in his tracks, and he wrote an entire piece about how freezing wine, throwing open bottles of wine that you didn't finish straight into the freezer is a remarkably efficient way of preserving... In the, in the bottle. In, in the, the bottle. Glass. In the bottle. Because I guess there's enough space there that it won't... Oh, of course. So once you've bottle. opened it and poured yourself a glass, it's not going to explode. You've taken the pressure off. It's no longer a full bottle. So explosions will never happen with an open bottle. There are a couple caveats. The bottle needs to be close enough to upright that the wine doesn't touch the cork. Because if it's on its side, a thin layer of almost pure alcohol separates and it acts as a corrosive agent and brings components out of the cork, out of the wood, into the wine, which can spoil the flavor. Freaky. Which is not so good if the bottle is on other side. level of cork tank. Going right. On. Yeah, totally different. Um, and also, it's true that if you're freezing a red wine, there will be a small amount of precipitation of tartrate crystals into the bottom that will strip a small amount of the color out of the wine. So it will look a little paler when you thaw it than it did when you froze it. But it is so incredibly efficient at preserving flavor, who cares? The reality is it's cheap, you've got a freezer, it works, it doesn't matter if you freeze it for a day, a week, a month, a year, it still tastes just as good when you thaw it, who cares? No pumping action, no, no extra money. No gadgets, no expenditures, the reality is you already have the best possible wine preservation system in your house. Sitting it's called a freezer. Sitting in your freezer. 
Well, thank you very much. Uh, and, your, and so, Wine Secrets available mm -hmm. everywhere. Amazon.com, Amazon bookstores yeah, locally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, of course, you I'll can always that. visit marneyold.com and check out some of my advice for consumers as well as insights from the book. Awesome. Well, thank you, Marnie. Marnie is also, by the way, about seven feet taller than I am. <laughs> you can't tell that right here in this video. But she's, it's the shoes. It's the shoes. It's, it's, it's the shoes and my genetics. <laughs> I won't. Bye, everybody. Okay, so we're recording, so it's okay. not very long. No worries.